Hello there, guys. Okay, look, I know it's been a while, a really long while, but I have a valid reason. I went to college. I now officially have two degrees and I'm ready to take on the world. Anyways, Avatar 2, The Way of Walter, came out recently and I got some people asking if I could make a bit of a sequel video to my The Biology of James Cameron's Avatar video I made all the way back in 2019. Oh, what a simpler time that was. I've been working on some pretty big and time-consuming video projects lately, so I should probably climb out of my cave to make a shorter video to hold you guys over until those are ready. My original Avatar video was also a smash hit, and only recently has it come to my attention that the official Avatar Twitter account even tweeted it out. So maybe it's canon? Question mark? Anyways, in this video, I will be discussing the new creatures and details about Pandora's ecology and zoology that appear in the way of water and seeing how they fit into my previous theories. To catch you guys up, I speculated that all the life on Pandora descended and evolved from a single common ancestor, and in a manner that greatly parallels how life evolved on our Earth. Inferring from their biology, most of the megafauna on Pandora's land appear to have evolved from a creature that looks somewhat like this, a six-limbed and four-eyed critter that crawled out of Pandora's oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. From this humble ancestor, many diverse species gradually evolved and adapted to the varied environments and niches of Pandora, from the banshees, to the dire horses, to the navi. Limbs became legs, and fins became claws, hooves, hands, and wings. The hypothetical cladogram, or evolutionary family tree I ended up with, looked something like this. Now, Way of Water introduces a slew of new organisms to study, giving us a cursory look at Pandora's oceans. To start, we should probably talk about the new Navi, who appear in the movie, the Metakaina, or Reef People. These Polynesian-inspired Navi are morphologically distinct from the forest-dwelling Navi, shown in the previous movie. Several characteristics set them apart. Instead of the thin, lion-like tails of the forest Navi, the Reef People possess long, paddle-like tails. Their fore and high limbs are also flattened into fin-like structures that the art book describes as strakes. If you look closely, they also have a third translucent eyelid that covers their eyes when they dive underwater, like a crocodile. All these traits allow the reef people to swim more efficiently in Pandora's coastal waters when compared to their forest-dwelling counterparts. The reef people appear to be genetically and evolutionarily distinct from the forest navi, and this means I can add a little bit more detail to the navi branch of my family tree. Originally, I speculated that the navi likely evolved from a shared common ancestor with the prolemurus. I stand by this claim, only that the Navi branch is more diverse than previously thought. There appears to be many distinct populations of Navi dispersed around the world of Pandora. These populations have remained largely isolated from each other genetically, and long enough for them to evolve independently. I am inclined to hypothesize that the reef and forest Navi might represent two distinct subspecies. These two populations must have shared a common ancestor at some point. But as the prehistoric Navi dispersed throughout Pandora, they became genetically isolated from one another, and adapted to their respective yet different environments. The forest Navi adapted to the forest, the reef Navi to the oceans. This is similar to our own genetic history. After our ancestors migrated out of Africa and across the globe, some populations became geographically isolated and adapted to their different environments. The physical diversity we see today between different humans across the continents is a relic of this process. Some of us are taller or shorter, darker or lighter skinned. They are slight biological differences evolved over the roughly 200,000 years we've been around. The Navi, however, appear to have taken this isolation and adaptation to a whole new degree. The differences between us humans took more or less a couple hundred thousand years. The level of physical differences between the reef and forest Navi, however, must have taken at least a few million years to become so pronounced. I'm inclined to suggest that the two populations have been separated for quite some time. The Reef Navi branched off from the Forest Navi deep into prehistory, maybe two to four million years ago if I were to guess. More akin to the difference between Homo sapiens and Homo erectus than something like different ethnic groups. Now does this mean that the Reef and Forest Navi are so different as to be separate species? Maybe, it's hard to say. How distant these people are to the Forest Navi remains to be seen. There was a little bit of a romance subplot in Avatar 2 occurring between a member of the forest branch and the reef branch, so we may get details on if these two peoples can interbreed in future movies. If they can, that would suggest that these two populations are like Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, simply two different subspecies within the same species. Details are pending, however. Okay, now on to the main course. 
The way of water formally introduces us to the marine life of Pandora. The fauna of the oceans is incredibly diverse, apparently more so than the land, and I believe this information supports the view that life did in fact originate from Pandora's oceans, only to later colonize the land. We see a wide range of organisms swimming around, from the plesiosaur-like ilu, the shark-like akula, and the massive, intelligent, and possibly even sapient whale-like species known as the tokun. Just looking at Pandora's fish, I use fish only as an analogy here, there are several distinct types of fish in the oceans, some with six fins, some with four fins, some with two fins, and some with seemingly no fins. There are also distinctly cephalopod, arthropod, and jellyfish-like creatures in the mix as well. How do we begin to make sense of this mess? Well, to start, I think we can easily speculate that the six-legged creatures on Pandora's land, I dubbed hexapods in the first video, are likely closely related to the six-finned fish of Pandora's oceans and rivers. It doesn't take much imagination to see that the three pairs of legs on the dire horse may have once been three pairs of fins, similar to those on the unnamed salmon-like fish Jake Sully's son catches. Again, like a lot of Pandora's biology, this parallels the evolution of our own ancestors. Fossil evidence has shown that our four limbs were once four fins, that our tetrapod ancestors used to haul themselves out of the water for short periods of time. The art book states that the skim wings not only have three pairs of fins, but also have both gills and lungs. This feature allows them to breathe both in and out of water, albeit briefly, similar to the lungfish of Earth, who are some of our closest living fish relatives. For this reason, the skim wing may be a close relative of Pandora's land hexapods. The unnamed salmon-like fish may be even closer due to its almost lobe-like fins that are reminiscent to those of a coelacanth. Next up are the tulkun and ilu. The tulkun and ilu are intriguing as both these species solely breathe air. They don't have gills, but instead have nostrils and lungs. All the evidence suggests that they don't appear to be fish at all. I believe these animals are descended from creatures that once lived on land, much like the whales, dolphins, and ichthyosaurs of Earth. These species are actually hexapods, relatives of the dire horse, navi, and banshees, that have re-evolved to the oceans of Pandora. Their six legs becoming flippers. You can even see the vestigial remnants of what were once individual digits in the flippers of the tulkun. I bet if we were to find fossils on Pandora, we'd see transitional species for these animals in the fossil record, showing a gradual re-entry into the oceans. The art book describes a Pandoran otter. Although the scene was cut from the movie, the creature is stated to still be part of Avatar's canon. This animal likely also originated from the land and only recently adapted to life along the coast, much like the seals and otters of our world. The exact placement of these marine members of Hexapoda within the existing family tree is unclear. Without fossils or genetics, we simply don't have enough information to know if Tulkun are closer related to dire horses or banshees. All we know is that they are closer related to these land creatures than the fish they swim amongst. As for the other types of fish, things get a little trickier. It's hard to say where exactly the placement of these fish groups are in relation to one another but it is possible that each branch derived from ancestors with increasingly fewer fins. The six-finned fish may have evolved from ancestors with four fins, the four-finned fish may have evolved from ancestors with two fins, and the two-finned fish may have evolved from ancestors with no fins. Under this model, the hammerbrow fish, for example, may represent an incredibly ancient group of fish, retaining basal or primitive characteristics of Pandora's first fish, which were finless, eel-like creatures, this is just an idea though, I could be wrong. It may be that the family tree is more complex than this. Lastly, a large portion of the marine fauna of Pandora has four eyes, two pairs of each. Even the cephalopod-like squid creatures have four eyes. Only the jellyfish-like mantle gills appear to break this rule, as they appear to be eyeless. This suggests that four eyes are an incredibly basal trait among Pandora's wildlife, predating the colonization of the land and even the evolution of fins. Some of the earliest animals of Pandora must have been four-eyed, worm-like creatures, from which all the others descended. Gathering all this information together, here's the evolutionary tree I've hypothesized for Pandora's marine life, based on what appears in the way of water. As you can see, it greatly mirrors the evolutionary tree of life on our Earth. Maybe a little too well? I'm biased, and could be wrong about a lot of the specifics, but this is the best I could come up with at the moment. Tell me what you think of my findings and of the movie itself. I hope you enjoyed this little sequel to my 2019 thought experiment. Who knows, there might even be a sequel to this video, and one after that, 
and after that, for every Avatar movie over the next 50 years. Anyways, I'll see you guys again very soon for another video. Thank you so much for watching.